Hello again. Welcome back to part four of our mini-series on playing rhythm electric guitar in worship. If you haven't checked out the previous videos, I'd love to encourage you to do that as we're building up from video to video. In this video, we're going to look at a few techniques you can use as a rhythm electric guitarist and when to play them. The two main areas we'll focus on in this video is dynamics and ambience. Before we jump in, let's have a quick reminder on our role as a rhythm electric guitar, as this will be the driving force behind when and what we play. As we previously discussed in video one, the role of the rhythm electric guitarist is to support the other instruments in the band. We do this by adding musical layers that will help give the song a fuller sound and emphasize bigger parts of the song, like choruses and bridges. We'll also help create momentum in the song by playing sparingly but with intention building up to specific sections and adding ambient elements to help to maintain a level of interest and focus in the music. With that in mind, let's take a look at dynamics. This is a key element in music generally, but it plays a very important part in worship music. Dynamics help portray the intended emotion, tension and story that a song was written to express. It helps the congregation engage in the song by taking them on a journey and keeps them engaged. Simply, this is achieved by varying the loudness and the quietness in a song, number of instruments being played at one time, and changing the rhythm of different sections and the types of tones or sounds the instruments are using. When considering the dynamics of a song, think about the message of the song and whether it is a praise, upbeat song, or a more worshipful and downbeat song. This will give you a starting point for deciding what techniques and tones you will use. For example, if you know the song is a slower worshipful song, you won't want to use heavily overdriven guitar tones with busy strumming patterns. Those would be better applied to faster, more upbeat songs. Likewise, you wouldn't use cleaner tones, heavily soaked in reverb for praise songs, as it will just get lost in the mix. Knowing the type of song and the message will allow you to plan ahead. It is also useful to break the dynamics of the song down into different parts like the intro, the verse, chorus and bridge and pay attention to how they interact with each other. A good example of this is Lion and the Lamb. It starts off with a large sounding intro with a full sound, but drops down into the verse with few instruments playing and adding space to the music. It also creates tension in the song by going into a quiet chorus after the verse with almost no instruments where the congregation would expect the chorus to be big and loud. This helps the choruses later in the song stand out even more and become a stronger declaration. When learning a song, be sure to pay special attention to how these parts of the song sound, feel, and work with each other to paint the bigger picture of the song's message. There are many techniques you can use as the rhythm electric guitar player to contribute to the dynamics of the song. Let's go over a handful of the most popular ones. The most important technique a rhythm electric guitar should use is to play sparingly with intention, and sometimes that means to not play at all. It can be very tempting to fill every space of the song with a full strumming pattern or picked chord arpeggio. Don't play it for the sake of playing, but rather listen to what the other instruments are playing and ask yourself, do I really need to be playing right now? If you are not sure what to play, seek instruction from the worship leader or the MD. Another way to help add dynamics to a song is to vary your strumming patterns. When it comes to playing rhythm electric guitar, it is best to approach it with a less is more mentality. Many people think playing rhythm electric means we should be playing our instrument as if it was an acoustic guitar, which is understandable but not necessary and can make the song sound busy and messy. It's important not to strum the full pattern all the way through the song. Try to build layers of dynamics by playing diamonds, which are single strums on the one beat during less busy moments, something a bit like this. Then play a simple pattern following the kick and snare beats during choruses, kind of like this. And only strumming heavily during bigger and louder parts of the song, like bridges. Here's an example of a bridge.
as discussed in a previous video, another way we can add dynamics is to simplify your chords by playing triads or simpler vo voicings to allow space for the other rhythm instruments and not take up too much space in the mix. Lastly, just because you are playing rhythm electric guitar does not mean all you should do is strum chords. You can also add dynamics by picking chords simply or adding rhythm through rhythmic picking of single note lines or arpeggios, chords and patterns. Here is an example of this. When applying these techniques, it's really important to pay attention to what the lead electric guitarist is playing and make sure you're not overplaying or clashing with their lead parts. The second area we are going to focus on is ambience. As a rhythm electric guitarist, there are a few techniques we can use to add ambience to songs. Ambient playing helps to add depth and emotion to quieter parts of songs like verses of more worshipful downbeat songs or down choruses and spontaneous moments of worship. It adds a subtle element of sound that pads out the music without being distracting or overwhelming and helps the congregation stay engaged in moments of worship. A great example of ambient guitar is in the song Waymaker by Leland. One way we can create ambience is to use a technique called swells. You can play swells by setting the volume output of your guitar to zero by using a volume effects pedal or volume knob on your guitar and playing a note or a chord before slowly increasing the volume again on your pedal or guitar. The key is to ensure the attack or the initial pick of the note is not heard so that all you hear is the tail of the note. Something a bit like this. Swells require a bit of help from your wet effects like delay and reverb to help create a spacier, wider sound. We will cover how to set your tone for this in the next video. Another way to create ambience is to rhythmically pick or tremolo pick a very simple guitar line, something a bit like this. This should be played heavily affected with reverb and lots of delay and occasionally additional modulation like chorus. It should be done sparingly though, as it can have the potential to be distracting. These are just a few examples of what to play and when. The most important thing to take away is to listen to the band and play sparingly. Thanks for joining me in this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we go into rhythm electric guitar tone and effects.